Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. Today we're going to be looking at adding virtual nodes to an Azure Kubernetes cluster. Now, when we look at Azure Kubernetes Services virtual nodes, basically what we're looking at is using container instances as an extension of Azure Kubernetes Services. Virtual nodes work like a node on a Kubernetes cluster that is a virtual machine that is able to run pods, but it's uh, built by the second rather than being built by the hour like a virtual machine is. And this allows for capacity to be added to a Kubernetes cluster instantaneously and then shut down instantaneously when the workload is deployed to that particular cluster. So it basically looks something like this where we have an existing cluster where we might have more master nodes which are provided by Azure and you have the Kubernetes nodes which are the virtual machines that are actually running the Kubernetes cluster that you are paying for. And then it will take that and extend it with a virtual node so that the plane, uh, the control plane gets extended to that virtual node. And then you interact with your API server and the Kubernetes master, which then integrates with that virtual node that is running as a container instance in this case. I'm here in the Azure portal and I want to show you how to create a cluster that uses virtual nodes. I've already created a cluster I'm going to be using for my demos in a minute. But to do this, basically just go to containers and then select Kubernetes services or go that find this some other way. And then you create a cluster that will have these enabled on the second tab. Now you can also do this from the command line as well. There's a command that you can run that will enable the uh, virtual nodes as long as it's supported in the region. Now the region support for this varies, so you need to check which regions will support it. And of course, with Azure, they're always adding new features to new regions or extending new features to existing regions as, it, as things get rolled out. Now on the scale tab is where I actually want to add this. Now, now you see this option here for virtual nodes and this is where you would tick that and uh, enable it so that whenever the cluster creates it will actually come up with the virtual nodes enabled and it will show up as a node on its, the Kubernetes cluster in addition to the virtual machines that you have running as well. So once you go through this process and you create it then you can then run a command in the console which we'll look at next. Now I'm here inside of the command prompt and I want to run a simple command to get a list of nodes, which is kubectl get nodes. And this will simply give me a list of the nodes available in my cluster. Now this is an actual node right here that I, that I created when I created my cluster. I only created one node on this cluster. So if I would have created more than one node, I would see two or three or 10 or hundred, however many I added to the node uh, pool whenever I created my cluster. This is the virtual node that is created when I said enable uh, the creation of virtual nodes. And this is not an actual virtual machine at all at this point. It's just showing up as a available node in my cluster and it won't instantiate until I actually put a pod on it. So to do that, I need to do a little bit of magic inside of my manifest file. So we'll take a look at that next. Now I'm looking here at a manifest file for Kubernetes inside of a text editor and we've seen this one already but I've modified it slightly for this demo and we've seen this service so basically we have a load balancer service on port 80 that is exposing this app here called Keen and that's my selector that points down here to my app and this is a deployment that's using one replica and then it is using a container spec that is going to be running my commander keen container that has commander keen installed in it and that I can play through a browser now down here is where the magic happens with the node selector now the node selector allows me to tell Kubernetes what kind of node I want to use to run this particular pod. So in this case, I'm telling it to run on a type of virtual kubelet. Now, if you remember back to when we looked at Kubernetes architecture, a, the kubelet is the daemon that essentially runs on every node in a cluster that tells the node what to do. So if I tell my API server, say, hey, go get me a pod, go create me a pod, then the API server is going to then communicate with the kubelet on a given node and tell it, create a pod with this container and here are the properties for that. But in this case, I'm using a virtual kubelet, which is attached to my 
Kubernetes cluster and brokered by Azure in this case. And instead of actually running on a virtual machine, it's running in a, in a virtual context. And it's really just telling Azure to go, hey, go create me a container instance and create me a pod on that container instance. And then here are the specs for that pod. And in this case, I'm telling it to run this Commander Keen pod, and this is my image, and this is the port I want to expose, and so on. So it's pretty basic in how you do this, but once you have it up and running, it's going to actually do all the creation of the resources on Azure for you, and then connect those resources to your cluster and allow it to act like it's an actual node on your cluster, in addition to the actual physical nodes that you've already created with the cluster that was created when you created Azure Kubernetes Services. I'm now back here in my command prompt or my PowerShell session, and I'm just going to run a kube command to create the deployment and the service for my Commander Keen uh, container. And that will then deploy it onto that Azure Container instance and then expose it through a load balancer on a public IP address. So we'll come back whenever this finishes. Now that everything's created, I can run a kube CTL to get the pods and um, get pods and that will give me a list of the pods that are running which are currently the commander keen pod that i created and i can do get services to get the address for that pod and it's currently running on this ip address so i can copy that so let's get a browser window and um, let's pull that up over here and let's pull up http colon slash slash pop in that and there's the list of my files and let's go ahead and log in to my pod here and my game really and uh, connect to it and then we've seen this before uh, let's go CD um, Keen and install my game and this is a brand new instance of this so I'm not using any kind of persistent storage behind the scenes on this uh, like I did in my last demos on storage so I couldn't you know, delete this and come back to it but I could do Keen one and there is the game that is loading up and once this is loaded, you can then play it just like you would otherwise. The, the difference between this, though, is the performance on these, um, these instances, these virtual nodes, is bound to container instances, which seems to be a little bit laggy when compared to other instances, other nodes, such as the virtual machines, depending on what size virtual machine you select. So this does seem a little bit glitchier, and the, the animation is not as smooth. And that's because the, the CPU uh, latency as well as the network latency on these is a little bit uh, less performant than I would hope for. Another thing is, is this um, service is still a little bit glitchy, and I had some issues creating the service uh, whenever I did. So virtual nodes, as a L-bait technology as of right now, is not something that I would use for a production oriented workload until some of the bugs are ironed out, but it does offer some nice features and the ability to quickly expand a cluster's capacity without having to add more nodes to it by way of adding more virtual machines. So until next time, thanks for watching Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure-related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.